The sense of smell is probably nature's oldest. We can trace its odoriferous origins back to single-celled organisms who sampled Earth's most primordial perfumes. Humans depend mostly on sight and sound to navigate our world, but on every step of that journey, we're led by our noses. Literally, because it's on the front of your face. Our eyes and ears can be fooled by illusions or noise, but not our noses. And compared to the spectrum of smell, our taste buds are crude, like looking at Van Gogh on an Atari. Of the human genome's 20,000 or so genes, almost 1,000 code for olfactory receptors. Of those genes have duplicated and specialized throughout our aromatic evolution, and they're found on all but two of your chromosomes. Being the eyeball-dependent apes that we are, only about 400 of those olfactory receptor genes are still functional, and each of them is specific to certain chemicals. During each of the 20,000 or so breaths that you take every day, air molecules float back and land on mucus-covered tissue the area of a couple postage stamps. And they're packed with about 40 million special scent-detecting nerves. These nerves are unique. They're the only ones in your body directly exposed to the environment, and they're regularly replaced about once a month. Each nerve ending is covered in just one of your 400 or so receptor types. One group of nerves for a Christmas tree, and another for cinnamon. If an odor molecule has just the right shape, it can fit like a tiny lock and key and trigger that nerve. But because each lock can accept many shapes of keys, we're able to detect lots more than 400 chemical odors. Sometimes molecules with completely different 3D shapes can trigger the same receptor. So some scientists think molecular vibrations might determine which keys unlock which receptors. When we smell, say, a rose, we're experiencing a mosaic of more than 200 chemicals. We can detect some of them at concentrations as low as two molecules in a billion. We can piece apart a smell with chemical instruments, but that doesn't equate to the experience of the smell. Olfactory nerve impulses enter the brain near the amygdala and other regions that process emotion and memory. And people rate memories evoked by smell as more emotional than those triggered by sight and sound. Our smell-associated memories tend to peak around age five, which is why the first whiff of a scent is often our most memorable one. Which is why no matter how many old ladies I meet that wear grandma's perfume, I always picture her. Smell is the first sense that all of us use. As babies, we can sniff out our parents before we ever lay eyes on them. And you might have smelled your first smell even before that. Human sperm are covered in the same type of odor detection proteins as we find inside our noses. Now, scientists aren't sure exactly what they're smelling for, but wherever that chemical quest ended, you began. The scents that we encounter are molecular mixtures though, not individual odors. So how many different smells can we smell? Compared to our eyes and ears, our sense of smell may be the most boundless. If we take into account the wavelengths of light we can detect using our three types of color receptors and our eye's resolution, scientists think we can distinguish between two and a half and seven and a half million colors. For sounds, that number is just 340,000. But for a long time, scientists put our scent resolution at a measly 10,000 different smells. But it turns out no one ever really tested that. I guess you'd say they sort of pulled it out of thin air. Sorry, that joke kind of stunk. But this year, scientists upped our smell estimate to one trillion. That's enough scratch and sniff stickers to reach from here and back to the moon 32 times. Truth is though, we don't really know enough about how our brain processes mixtures of odor molecules or how many dimensions of smell we can recognize at once, to even know if that's a good guess. It might be lower or even higher. The speed of smell, riding the breeze to reach our noses might be slower than light or sound, but it can deliver messages from way beyond the limits of our eyes and ears, from miles or even years away. Is there a smell that conjures up a special memory for you? Let me know down in the comments and stay curious. When I ask my dogs, do you wanna go for a walk? They aren't processing the real meaning of that sentence the way that we do, like, hmm, uh, let me see, do I wanna go for a walk right now, or get some exercise? Maybe I'm not feeling it today. I'm a dog, like, what does it even mean to want something? 